conférence de presse de Mia Press Madre, signée for My Nani Mother, Moretti, directed by Nani Moretti, on TV à Festival. À bientôt. See you soon. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Ciao, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this press conference on My Mother by Nani Moretti. I would like to introduce everyone at the table, right at the far end, the producers, Paolo Del Brocco and Domenico Procacci, who's been working with Nani Moretti for a long, long time. Next to me, we have the two co-script writers, Francesco Piccolo and Valia Santella. And now, I think it's time to uh, introduce the family. First of all, we have the lead role, the mother, an outstanding actress in the theater, well known at the Piccolo Teatro in Milan. She plays Shakespeare, Beckett, Brecht, uh, and many others. Giulia Lazzarini. Her daughter. You already saw her in a film by Nani Moretti. She was the psychiatrist in We Have a Pope. In Il Caimano, she played two parts. And today, she has an even greater mission. Monsieur Moretti, je crois, plus ou moins. Margareta Bouille. Margareta Bouille. À côté d'elle, next to fille, her, her daughter, plutôt douée, who is very gifted <laughs> in Latin et pour le cinéma, and uh, in acting Beatrice as well, Mancini. Beatrice Mancini. In the middle, we have someone who is a very great actor when it comes to playing a very poor actor. Yesterday, he got, uh, in the past, he got a, a prize, uh, Barton Fink, the Coen brothers, uh, John Torturo. Alors voilà, il partage avec nous de, de chapitre en chapitre depuis son premier film. As the years go by, he has come for many different uh, films. I am self-sufficient. For example, we have seen many chapters in his life, and for the sixth time in Cannes, we have uh, Nani Moretti. Of course, he received the Golden Palm for the Sun's Room. He was also a member of the jury. Nani Moretti. I uh, will ask Nani the first question. Since the beginning, you decided to get people both to laugh and cry at the same time. My films have always contained these two aspects. 
Both my early films and my later films, there are always times that are painful in my films and times that are full of joy. This isn't a specific strategy that I've worked out. It's just the way I uh, talk about people and life in general. German TV. I have a question for Mr. Moretti. People talk about uh, the cinema in your film. What, according to you, is the part played by the cinema in society today? As uh, Margarita says in the film, Però mentre rispondo sto pensando ad altro. Quindi non, non deve, I'm non going deve to tener conto delle cose. Say certain things, dirò. but perhaps think of other things. So Quelle don't uh, take account of what I'm going to say to you now. Allora, I'll tell you what I really think in the bar in a few minutes' time. First of all, I believe that it's up to the cinema to make good films, if possible, uh, new kinds of films. And if possible, films that don't give you the impression when you're watching them that you've already seen them time and again. You mustn't have the feeling, oh, I've already seen this uh, many a time. That's what the cinema must do. To make a good film, I don't think there are any privileged topics to address. I don't think one can talk about first league and second league films. Any topic, any subject can be the stuff of a good film or a bad film for that matter. Rodrigo Fonseca from TV Globo Brasil. Domanda para Nani. A última parola del film é domani. The end of the film refers to tomorrow. Were you thinking about the future, the future for the character, for the mother, for Europe? How do you view the future of the Italian cinema? How do you view the future of Europe today? When she's asked, what are you thinking about? And the answer is, tomorrow. I didn't want to refer to the future of Europe. But of course, one can interpret this in many different ways. This is a film that talks about those who remain, those who are alive. It talks about uh, people who die, who leave us, uh, books, the Latin, the grandmother taught her granddaughter. Memories remain as uh, the grandmother's friends refer to and reminisce about. Margarita e Giovanni che attraverso Margarita degli ex alunni della mamma and Giovanni through the stories told by the former students of their mother discover something new about their mother. It's as though these former students were able to inform them of something essential about their mother that neither of them, even if they were very close to their mother, had realized. As to the future of the Italian cinema, I don't know what to say. I'm very pleased to see there are three Italian films in competition this year. And there are Italian films in the other sections, too. I think that uh, they are the fruit of individual initiatives, though, 
of uh, directors and producers working independently. The presence of the Italian cinema in Cannes is not so much the fruit of a given environment or atmosphere. Uh, this uh, atmosphere is always very discreet in, in Italy. The cinema is very important uh, as an artistic uh, phenomenon Hello, and even morning. as I'm an Augusto industry. I have a short question for Mr. Tuturo first. Uh, how's working with Mr. Nanini Moretti playing this difficult actor? And for Mr. Moretti, how much of yourself there is in the main character because uh, she's a female director. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> you want to answer first? Uh, I thought the, uh, that the script was very beautifully written and well observed for people who are in this world. <laughs> and I was very uh, moved by the script when I, when I read it. And, uh, I really loved working with, with Nani and with Margarita. Uh, it was a real big experience for me as a person. C'è molto di me nel personaggio di Margarita. We're talking about the character of uh, Margarita. Che protagonista di questo film. I never really thought that the protagonist in the film could be a man. From the outset, I felt that the main character in the film should be a woman, and I immediately thought about Margarita. Of course, there's a lot of me in Margarita. Whereas Giovanni is perhaps the person I would like to be. And maybe also the person that Margarita would like to be, too. Sorry, it's hard to stand here. Mike, Mike Roddy from Reuters. Uh, there's, a, there's an absolutely beautiful scene in, in your movie where uh, John is, is saying, uh, I'm going back to reality, I'm going back to reality. And suddenly you <laughs> cut to the mother in, in the hospital bed, and it's, it's a very uh, telling moment in that film. And I'm just wondering, uh, it seems to me that you've managed here to blur reality and fantasy in a way that one rarely sees, and I, I was wondering if that was your intention from the start. This is obviously to the director, Mr. Murthy. Have, have you been able to hear that? Non c'è stata la traduzione, scusate. Interprete, non si sente nulla. Ah. Un petit problème d'interprète. No, non è chiuso. Dimmi. Dimmi. Oui. Ecco, ecco, mi, mi ripeti per cortesia? Mm. Yeah. Sì. Sì. Yes, yes, your question again. Sì. Very sorry. Uh, I'll speak slower. I'm from New York. Sì, sì, ho capito. E la domanda qual era, Bonucci? So there's, so there's a beautiful scene where you have, where John is saying, I'm going back to reality, I'm giving up being an actor, and then you cut to the mother in the hospital bed, so that the reality is this terrible fact that the mother's dying. And I'm wondering if that was your intention in this film to blur the, the limits between reality and film. You've, you, if, if that was your intention, you've certainly succeeded. No, confusion. Confusion between reality and imagination? Well, no. no. The idea was not really to blur things. During the sceneggiatura and during the riprese, during the writing and the shooting of the film, we worked a lot to try to uh, intermingle several levels of reality. You have dreams, you have memories, you have fantasies. 
il tempo del film è il tempo dello stato emotivo di Margherita, in cui tutto the times in the film match the times in the mind of Margarita where everything coexists, everything is equally urgent, be it concerns for the mother, pain, problems with the daughter, problems about work. All this is mixed together with the souvenirs, memories, dreams. Sometimes the spectator, when viewing a scene, may not immediately understand whether he's seeing a dream or reality or a fantasy. I like that. Indeed, the film is built up on these various levels as to the scene you mentioned. You have uh, the scene in the hospital and then the scene uh, with John Turturro. There were quite a lot of scenes in the middle, in fact. And I decided during the editing to go straight to the hospital scene, as you noted, and then straight into reality. Una domanda per signor Meretti. I have a question to Mr. Moretti. In the film, the director says that she doesn't feel able to interpret reality any longer because she doesn't understand anything about reality. Because I thought to myself that the, this film was quite the opposite because you have indeed managed to interpret the reality of uh, bereavement, the reality of death, and you've successfully orchestrated the film and created this balance between life and death, between very lively scenes and pain. How do you view the responsibility of an artist in this respect? in terms of interpreting reality, in particularly in this film where there's so much pain. In this film, you also pay tribute to the mother as a figure. <laughs> the film is very generous. It's quite outstanding. Di Margherita <laughs> nel film. The press conference of Margarita in the film is indeed a press conference. It's uh, not supposed to necessarily be a political film. And the character of Margarita refers to uh, the situation in the country, to reality. In my film, I wanted uh, to reflect reality from a different stance in terms of uh, emotions, the feelings of people. Il film che io ho fatto è molto diverso dal film che Margherita sta facendo, ecco. The film I shot is very different from the film she is shooting. And in this scene, and at this point in her life, she has a feeling that she's not up to it. As Margherita said in a previous interview, she sensed this, just as I feel in this press conference. She felt she couldn't live up to the expectations people had in her. But the film that's being shot deals with a reality in a totally different way from the way I deal with it in my film. We're talking about two different films, two different press conferences. That is this one and that portrayed in the film. We're talking about two different directors, Margarita and I. Maybe I didn't fully answer your question. I would like uh, uh, to ask a question to all the actors at the table. 
profondément de la direction d'acteur de Margarita. Do Nanny Moretti and Margarita differ in terms of directing their actors and actresses? Beatrice. Per John, questa domanda. Per John e Margarita. Beatrice. That's a question for John and Margarita. Forse meno, meno aggressiva, perché penso che Margarita nel film sia abbastanza sempre sotto sotto pressione. I think that Margarita in the film is constantly under pressure and hence she's very aggressive. I must admit that I'm very fortunate. I had my special space, so to speak, my contact with with uh, Nani and Margarita was very close, very intimate. So I really didn't know what was happening in the outside world. I only knew when I actually saw the film. I'd read the script, of course, but one doesn't realize uh, when reading the script how the film will turn out. And so I didn't really fully realize what the film would look like. I was extremely fortunate. Margarita was a, a wonderful uh, person to act with. She was a friend. I was extremely fortunate. It was a very happy experience. It was wonderful to be part of this project, to belong to this film, and it was lovely to play this part, which linked me sentimentally uh, to uh, Nani, even if we didn't know each other very well beforehand. But I understood through him what I needed to do. I understood his mother. And I tried, insofar as possible, to be very sensitive and attentive. Things felt very comfortable. He never tried to force things in me. He just, uh, without explaining exactly what he wanted, he just directed me in a very gentle way. There were usually about a dozen takes, and it, afterwards uh, I was able to change certain things after the first takes. I come from the theater, so I have a way of working that is somewhat different. Uh, I build things more than perhaps in, in a film for the cinema. And uh, what I tried to do was just to relax, to let myself go. And I was uh, very careful to try and do exactly what he wanted. And uh, if I was able to do what he expected of me, I may not have fully achieved this, but I think I largely managed to do what he wanted. You did succeed, indeed. <laughs> Maybe would, he would have liked to, to behave in the same way I did when shooting the film, but he wasn't entitled to do so. So he uh, let me play this uh, bad girl uh, part. No, he was extremely kind che, during the shooting. Uh, Una cosa sulla musica, perché I wanted in to caso, ask you about the music. Usata in un modo diverso, che non come sonora, I noticed cioè non era preponderante, uh, that ma you use music in a somewhat different way compared with other films. It's not only sogno. present, but it's still very e important at certain times. Leonard Cohen's uh, song, for example. Sometimes the music just slips uh, into the film, but it remains quite important. And I wanted to know what exactly your goal was, to have music that wouldn't be very present, but which at the same time would remain fundamental. Sometimes during the editing, I make certain choices. And I decide to use a music that's already been recorded, music that already exists. That happened, for example, in one of the parts of Caro Diario, 
And this time as well, while I was editing the film, I did something similar. I can't explain why I make these choices. It's hard for me to uh, elaborate a theory to explain my choices. Uh, I didn't want to have original music for this uh, film. That's why I chose existing music, music by various uh, musicians. I always find it very difficult to explain why I make certain choices. Let me give you an example. Often, the camera approaches a character very, very slowly. And then what I needed to do was to use this for the most suitable scenes in the film. Often I realized we had to approach the character in an almost imperceptible way, but we had to draw closer. And these are choices. Which I can't really explain. I don't have a theory to explain these uh, choices I make. <laughs> Michelangelo Antonioni said, yes, indeed, he's very important. La sua caratteristica era di nascondersi sempre dietro un personaggio femminile. He hid behind a female character. What is so fantastic about your film is not just the script and the storyline, it's the fact that it's uh, Margarita Boy who plays this part. She's not very suitable. I not mai pensato. As a director, I never thought about myself in terms of uh, this part in the film. As soon as I thought about the topic, I immediately thought about Margarita Bui. And I wanted her to appear like that, anxious, uh, irritable, always fraught with the feeling she uh, wasn't up to it. I felt it would be very interesting this time round to entrust these characteristics to a woman as opposed to a man. The character is very different from other women characters who take care of other people, are very enveloping. On the contrary, she is always somewhere else compared with where she actually is at that moment in time. She finds it very difficult to keep control of her life. I would like to ask Nani Moretti about the Cannes Festival. Yes, I think uh, this is the seventh time I've come here because I also came for Ece Bombo. Cannes has always been an important place for you. You won the Golden Palm. The first thing I wanted to ask is the following. What is the underlying meaning of Cannes this time round for you in terms of the, the international public? Did you think the international public would react differently from the Italian spectators? Do they view your work in a different way? I don't think they view my work in a different way, but no doubt the, the way an international audience looks at my film is a bit different. You don't have the same influences as in Italy here in an international festival and in other countries, people 
go to see a film by Moretti, full stop. They don't think so much about uh, the person who I represent in Italy, i.e. my uh, political opinions, certain interviews I may have had. Why do I not give more interviews? They don't think about these uh, other things. They don't think about whether uh, I appear nice or not nice, uh, cold or warm uh, when I'm talking with the journalists. In Italy, I'm sure there are many other elements that enter into play when people go and watch my film. Internationally, people just go to see a film by me, full stop. John Turturro, what was it like uh, working in the film with Nanni Moretti and playing the part of a bad actor? Oh, I know Nanni for a, a, a long time. I, yeah. We met at Cannes and many years ago, and I. C'era un suo film, Illuminata, qui, e un mio film, Aprile. Quella è la prima volta che ci siamo incontrati. We met for the first time in Cannes a few years ago. Are you for very, very, uh, a part of a very bad actor? That was the proposal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't... Uh, do jobs just by the part. It's about who you go in to work with. And yeah. uh, I got to work with Nani and Margarita, and so I, I really I loved the script. I thought it was, uh, you know, beautifully written, and it was something that I thought had relevance to my own life. Yes. Just reading it. So, uh, and it was, you know, it was challenging, and at the same time it was very exciting. And he really, you know, pushed pushed me and. In, in all the right ways, but I felt very free mm -hmm. in the film at the same time, and he's also very specific, so uh, it was a very, you know, full experience and a good one for me. I'm sure. So. And what is uh, your relationship now with Italia, with uh, Italian language, because you seem very free <laughs> with Italian language? I need a coach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it's a little bit better than it was. So. Sounds good. <laughs> non sento nulla, eh, dico in cabina. Non sento nulla. Eh. Eh, dunque, no, devo dire un, due cose, Daniel. Sì, sì, Nani. I'd like to say two things, Daniel. Che l'attore Turturro fosse anche regista. Ecco, mi, mi piace lavorare con attori che sono anche registi. Aye. E poi... I like the idea that Totoro is also a director that stimulates me, that reassures me. But John also has a link with Italy. He works with Italian directors. He made a wonderful documentary himself. He has a close link with my country and the culture of my country. And that's one of the many reasons which led me to choose him. Of course, I have great esteem for him as an actor, but there were all these other facts that entered into account as well. Um, your presence is brilliant on stage, and I was wondering if you could comment on your acting your physical acting, because you're so physically present and all, you're, you're dancing on that this platform. How do you do it? <laughs> Does, is it improvised? Does Nani Moretti direct you? Are you trained? All choreographed by Nani. <laughs> no. No, 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 all the moves no, I no, did in the no, film no, no. were choreographed by Nani, exactly. <laughs> no, 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 anzi, anzi. Prima, prima di quella scena. No, no, not at all. Prior to that uh, scene, I said to him, John, do you want a choreographer? <laughs> he said, no, let Ci me do my own thing. <laughs> and that's how uh, we worked. Yes, hello, it's Ninos Michelidis from Greece. In uh, your film, there are various kinds of, of uh, reality. The voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, or different aspects of reality. One is the making of a film, which is something real. The other one is the mother dying, another reality. And the, the other one is the workers and the strike, which is the reality of Italy today. But that reality, you make it into a film which no longer is a reality. It's a fiction, because it's a film already. 
So I wanted to know that this shifting of, of the reality of, let's say, Italy today, is it in a way an attitude from on your side? Because, say, 40 years ago, directors used to say, we make films because you want to change the world, but today they don't say this anymore. They say cinema has no impact, that kind of impact. So is it a shift of you from the reality of the social kind of problems to the reality of the people's uh, sentiments? I mean, that's what really comes about. The film is that sentiments and the feeling about the mother, and they understand that uh, they were not doing what they should have been doing, and they were not so humane in their connection with uh, either on the set or in the family. Could you comment on that, please? Thank you. Ma, eh, io volevo che il film che Margherita gira fosse molto diverso dalla sua vita. I wanted uh, Margarita's film to be very different from her life. I didn't want this to be a Nanni Moretti style film. I wanted her film to be different. She was uh, experiencing great uncertainties in her life, and I wanted her film to be full of uncertainties too. Insicura su tutto. Volevo che il film fosse molto solido, Margarita molto isn't sure of herself. A differenza um, I wanted the, the film to appear well structured come, in contrast to how she felt Margarita. at that time. Um, non volevo che nel suo film ci fosse un in her film un, una eco dei suoi problemi privati, ecco, volevo che fosse completamente un'altra cosa. I didn't want there to be any e... reflection of ecco. her uh, personal emotions. I wanted the film to depict something totally different. Uh, 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 in the masterpiece of film is we find several excellent dialogues, but the best one is the one about Kubrick. Could you tell us a few words about your love by Kubrick? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my love for Kubrick well let's see ecco. love any spectator might have for Kubrick devo dire che anche insomma voglio ricordare che I would like to say that sometimes Torturo added personal things to his character. He read the script and he fully understood his character in a very logical way. In terms of this character, he occasionally added some personal things. E alcune sono, sono rimaste poi and some nel of the film. things ecco. he added then remained in the niente, film. Insomma, che ci fosse As for Kubrick, questo accenno da parte dell'attore che interpreta Turturro, I wanted him to allude to Kubrick. I wanted to John Turturro to refer to one of the most famous people in the cinema. Qui, ecco. It was quite impressive the way he acted that scene. Thank you.